the Third Battle of Ypres. The race to the sea left the Allies in possession of the city of Ypres, a provocative finger pointing into German conquered territory. They tried cutting off that finger, suffocating Allied troops with chlorine gas, but they failed. After fighting steadily on other fronts, the Allies were exhausted. So were the Germans. The fields in Flanders are low and swampy, made habitable by drainage ditches, not ideal for battle. Sir Douglas Haig wanted to take advantage of the enemy's fatigue to push north, take the bases used by German submarines, and prevent further attacks on transatlantic shipping lines. The Allied sappers dug tunnels under the German lines for 18 months. In June, they detonated a million pounds of Amatol right under their feet. I was told that the concussion blew many men to the ground. The Germans' defenses were in disarray. The Allies could have moved forward, but no. The New Zealanders took Messine. That's all. With hindsight, it seems like a waste. It took six weeks before pushing forward, and it started raining. Endlessly. The battlegrounds became a quagmire, swallowing everything, vehicles, horses, and men. Everyone was cold. The Allied artillery barrage was incessant. When I arrived at the front, I found a German soldier's diary dating back a couple of weeks. Finsternis wechselt sich ab mit Licht wie am hellen Tag. Die Erde bebt, die Männer hören nichts als Trommelfeuer. Das Stöhnen verwundeter Kameraden, das Geschrei gefallener Pferde. Das wilde Schlagen ihrer eigenen Herzen. Es gibt keinen Kommen. The battle started three months ago. They tell me the rain hasn't stopped since. How many times have I stepped on a dead comrade? so as not to be sucked in by the mud. The other morning, wounded who had been crying for hours, some for days, finally stopped. They drowned in their trenches. We Canadians were asked to take what remained of Passchendaele. Not a village, but a pile of rubble. We did it, but it ended there, really. 250,000 Allied dead and wounded. 200,000 Germans for a pile of rubble. Today, some historians say that Passchendaele symbolizes the futility of trench warfare. I'd say it was even worse. It made me believe in hell.